Sleeping. This is one of the most challenging parts of becoming new parents. It doesn't just, isn't just difficult in the first early weeks, it's probably really the first 12 months of your baby's life. So in this part of our DVD, we hope to show you normal sleep cycles, what they look like, how we can actually help detect when our babies are tired, different techniques that we will use to help settle your baby, as well as covering some SIDS. It's really important to understand how your baby sleeps. So to help you do that, I'm going to show you on the whiteboard what our sleep cycles are like. Throughout the night, you turn over in your sleep and you go back to sleep the other way. So our sleep cycles as adults look very much like this. Just a nice, long, smooth sleep. We still have light sleep and deep sleep. Baby sleep cycles look very much like this. So you can see they're much shorter sleep cycles. This down the bottom here is the deep sleep. And you know your baby is in a deep sleep when the baby's very still. There's no movement. They've got calm breathing their eyes are shut and they're very peaceful. This up here is the light sleep phase. Light sleep, your baby may open their eyes, they may start to breathe a little faster. There's still not a lot of movement unless they get stimulated by something and that could be pain. So this entire sleep cycle from deep to light may go anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Ours last a lot longer than that. They're well over 90 minutes. It's really important to understand that those sleep cycles are very short for the first three months of their life especially. So when your baby is actually has had a feed, quite often they'll then go into, they'll go to sleep after the feed in your arms. So they become very, very peaceful and still. When we're new parents, we hold the baby in our arms for the first 20 minutes. Then we try to put them down into the cot. That's actually when they're coming into their light sleep phase. Tired cues are really important for us to be able to identify as new parents. And they're so easy to miss, especially if your baby's been born early. So what are tired cues? One of the early signs that your baby's getting tired may be a sneeze, maybe a yawn. The next thing that they might do is they'll be looking around and they'll look at you. So their eyes will be going around from left to right, up and down. Then all of a sudden they'll stop and they get starey. So it's a blank look on their face that they'll have. Very quickly after that, they may start to pull at their face or their ear sometimes. Following that, quite quickly, they'll start to cry. They'll be red and blotchy in the face and they'll start to cry. So the crying is actually one of the last signs that your baby's tired. We've missed the early signs. We need to get them in the early signs to help them settle sooner. As I mentioned before, if you've actually missed the early signs and your baby's overtired and crying a lot, then what are we going to do to help calm them down? The first thing that you'll do is put your hands over your baby's hands. Now they're going to be actually past that at the moment and they'll feel like they're trying to pull their arms back from you. You need to keep going. They're not pulling away from you and saying they don't want that. That's their normal muscle response. So keep hold of their arms because that will calm them down. Their heart rate will slow. Their breathing will get slower. Their eyes will be closed shut. And then if you talk to them calmly and lower your voice, drop your voice, the tone of your voice very quietly, speak slowly and just talk to your baby gently, you'll notice that their eyes will start to not be screwed up and they'll actually refocus back on you. 
You may find that you need to turn your lights off in the room that you're in or maybe turn the TV down if they really have lost control and they're crying and crying and crying. So you need to move them to a quieter spot so that you can help them to reorganise their brain and their body and calm down. We've talked about many ways of wrapping your baby to help settle them. There are lots of things out there on the market that you can use. You don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on special sleeping bags and things like that for your baby. A simple muslin wrap or a simple wrap like this one that we have here today is just as effective and it will grow with your baby. So again, just to recap, how do we wrap the baby? So you place the wrap down, pick your baby up, fold the top piece of the wrap over, allow their arms to be where they want them to be. Don't pin them down to their body. Allow their arms to be up near their face, they'll feel more secure up there. Top of the wrap over the arm, put your finger in their armpit as you bring the wrap across their body. Same on the other side. Wrap over their arm, finger in their armpit, and then over their body. That can be loosely lightened off when your baby goes to sleep. Unlike with a lot of the sleeping bags, they're not able to get their hands out. So when they get to a teething stage and they want to suck on their hands, they can't get their hands out. I just briefly want to talk to you about how we check our baby's temperatures before we go to bed at night, or maybe when you're down the street and you've got your baby in the pram, or perhaps for all the grandparents that may be watching this DVD as well. How do you check the baby's temperature to make sure that it's okay to go to bed and sleep safely knowing that they're warm enough? And very briefly, we're just going to talk about SIDS as well. In the hospital, you would have been shown to feel your baby's chest with your hand, like so. If your baby's asleep and it's the middle of winter, you may very well wake your babies up with the cold hands. So sometimes it's easier to actually put your finger in behind the baby's head. If they're hot and sweaty in there, you've got too much on your baby. So you may need to remove a layer. A good rule of thumb, as we've been shown, is your baby needs uh, their layer of clothing plus one layer as well, is a good rule of thumb. For SIDS, babies don't just suffer from SIDS only at home. It can happen at creches, it can happen at grandparents, it can happen in prams, it can happen at your friend's house. So we need to show all of our support people and all of the community the same technique so that you feel comfortable as parents that you know they're doing that. From before in our feeding part of the DVD, we spoke about turning the baby on their side and you will need to do that probably from two to three weeks of age. You'll find that they won't settle on their backs to go to sleep like they have been. So again, for SIDS information, it's safe to settle them on their side. Then before they go into a very deep sleep, you just very gently bring their hips through so that they're always laying on their back. When you bring your baby home from hospital, it's very, very normal to have the baby out in the lounge room with you. So we like to keep an eye on them and that's really great. We want to see everything that they're doing. From two to three weeks of age though, their brain starts to work a little bit more, their nervous system starting to work a little bit more. And they're actually, they can become very easily overstimulated by the noises in the environment, be that the bright lights, be that the television, even though you may have the sound down. You may be banging in the kitchen, you may be having conversations, front doorbell going, etc. Lots of visitors, etc., etc. So when we get to the second and the third week, you'll find what we're trying to achieve with our babies long term, obviously, is to get them to learn how to self-soothe. They're actually capable of doing more things than what we give them credit for. We don't have to rock them to sleep in our arms every single time to get them to sleep. So the idea, some of the strategies we've shown you, is to settle them in their cot. 
then we actually need to move the cot out of the noisy environment and you're going to use your legs and check on your baby and just check they're still asleep then you can come back to the lounge room and your conversation, making dinner, etc. So you start doing that from the second and the third week. Sometimes it's still fine to have them out in the lounge room with you to settle them a little bit, but don't leave them there all day long because they'll be very overstimulated and start to sneeze more, colour changes, vomiting, busy arms and cry louder and it will take you a longer period of time to settle them. In the first three months of your baby's life, it can become very distressing and confusing for parents when their baby is not sleeping through the night or their parents think that their baby isn't sleeping for long enough. Following on from what we showed you on the whiteboard earlier about the short sleep cycles, babies may only sleep for eight hours out of 24 and possibly up to 16. It may take longer for your baby to achieve that, but the idea is that that's what we start to work through from two weeks of age. We're trying to get the baby to help self-soothe. Self-soothing technique is actually the baby uses their hands. So their hands are their biggest GPS. They like having their hands up around their face. They feel secure, that helps them to calm, and they'll actually suck. So it's non-nutritive sucking. So they don't need food, they're sucking to calm themselves down. So if they've lost control and they're crying a lot, their hands will come up to their face and they're going to try and suck. If you need to use a dummy in this time, use it very briefly and don't start with the dummy in. Give your baby a chance. So we need to give them a chance to try and be able to learn how to settle themselves. This is the hardest part for parents to be uh, know that it's okay to keep trying. It's okay for me to allow the baby to cry very briefly for one or two minutes before I have to pick them up or before I have to let them have a suck on the finger. Keep trying and persevering. It may not happen every single time that you do it. You keep working with it and as the baby's brain and body matures, you'll find that by the fourth or even the sixth week, they're starting to calm down. The idea, you'll know this is working, the idea is at night you'll be able to just put your hand on the baby or actually just use your voice and say, it's okay, mum's still here and the baby will go, ah, and then go back to sleep in from that light sleep back into the deep sleep stage. Parents sleep. We don't get much sleep when you have a newborn baby. So in the early months, you need to talk to each other, communicate, use your support people around you so that you can actually maximise the amount of broken sleep that you'll be getting to survive. So in those early months, you've got to expect that you're not going to be able to get eight hours of straight solid sleep. It's not possible with the size of the baby's stomach due to feeding and it's not possible also because we've shown you with those sleep patterns that the baby has as well. So how are we going to manage it? Then you need to sleep when the baby sleeps, which is easier said than done. But if you've had a rough night and you've been up with your baby frequently and you know that you have a, a, a cup of tea that you've got lined up with your friends the next day, then maybe it is that you cancel that or perhaps you relocate that to your house and get them to help you. On the weekends, it may be that your partner sleeps in on a Saturday and then you have a sleep in on a Sunday so that you can manage that together. Use your friends, use your support people so that you can maximise your sleep. Be aware that for the first three months, it's not going to be a fantastic sleep pattern that you've been perhaps used to and it will eventually get there 
but you need to be patient and kind to yourself. So don't put too many social outings and expectations on yourselves during that time.